with you again for another night of high school basketball as the Muscat. Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome. Muscatine one and five coming into this ball game. Seven and two are the Spartans, but the Muscatine's lone win on the season is against the Spartans on the road at Pleasant Valley earlier this year. Coach Susan Orvis and her team looking for win number two over the Spartans this season. We'll have some more information as we break this thing down a little bit before tip off. But we have a, a, a special feature for you tonight. Uh, Activities director at the Muscatine High School was able to sit down with head coach Susan Orvis earlier this afternoon. And we'll have uh, an interview coming right now uh, with Tom Olsis and Susan Orvis giving you some insight on this ball game. Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome coach Susan Orvis, head coach of the Muscatine girls basketball team to our coaches pregame show tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight, coach Orvis. The Thanks Muskies, for having me. You are welcome. The Muskies got back on the court last week with games versus Bettendorf and North Scott. And tonight, our Muskies welcome Pleasant Valley to Muscatine. Coach, can you tell us a little bit about your games last week against Bettendorf? You hosted Bettendorf, and then you were on the road on Friday against North Scott. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, we had an interesting week. We kind of had an all-hands-on-deck week. We were a little late coming out of break. And uh, we really went into our Bettendorf game with about uh, seven or eight kids uh, available to play. So it was an all hands on deck uh, kind of game on Tuesday night against Bettendorf, but it was great to get back in action. Um, I was pleased with our kids. They really did a good job. We had a lot of moving parts and, and we had a, a few moving parts. So um, to give ourselves an opportunity to win that ball game was a positive. Uh, certainly, um, we had some chances really in the third quarter. Uh, we were up by four and had four or five consistent stops there. And, and we missed converting some good offensive opportunities and shots there that would have stretched that lead in the third. Uh, and then we found ourselves in a nip and tuck game down the stretch and uh, just uh, missed a couple opportunities late. But uh, really pleased with our effort uh, under those circumstances. And then certainly as players and uh, became available throughout the week, uh, you head up to North Scott and um, you know, um, I like us against North Scott looking at the matchup on paper, but you always have to play well at the pit. Uh, I think we we just uh, got behind early, found ourselves in a little bit of a hole and had to play catch up a little bit uh, defensively. I thought we were strong. Uh, we kept their top two producers down pretty good. They had a couple other kids make some nice plays for them. Uh, but at the same time, we had some offensive inefficiencies and we're we're still trying to work those things out. But um, thankfully, uh, we had everybody return to practice Saturday and Monday, and we feel like we're almost back to full strength and uh, we're ready to hit the ground running here this week. As you had a little shortened roster during last week's game for part of the time, any positives or highlights for maybe girls that were in slightly different spots or doing some different things than they had been doing before Christmas break that you want to highlight? Yeah, certainly, um, and, and that's the, the case. Um, it was an opportunity for a lot of some other kids to come off the bench and, and contribute some minutes. Uh, certainly our juniors, uh, Sophia Thomas and Maya Jansen, we, we put those kiddos in that position uh, to step up and, and, and fill some gaps for us, and they did a nice job. I really think Grace Bodie has had to step up a lot for us. Um, I think uh, Zoe Long is going to be responsible for a good part of our production, and when people have scouted that and, and, and taken, you know, uh, their game plan at her a little bit more. Grace is forced to handle the basketball more, initiate our offense, and score more. And uh, I'm also starting to see some of our, our roster. We need more balance offensively and, and starting to see those kids step up. And they're going to have to do it down the stretch. And, and when we are shorthanded, uh, those things were exposed a little bit more. So, um, yeah, really pleased with, with their response. I think they're seeing what we need. And, and now that we're full strength, hopefully we can implement that uh, across the board. Coach, this will be your second game against PV. This year, you went up to Pleasant Valley in December, so and you host them tonight. What are some of your keys to victory tonight versus the Spartans? What do we need to do well to bring home a victory? Yeah, uh, you know, PV over there was probably our best game of the year so far. Um, really saw the kids play confidently and assertively. Um, I think tonight it's going to be a lot of the same. Uh, PD doesn't change a lot. We're going to see a, a two three extended zone, we're going to see a press. We're going to see their motion offense. Um, I think the three keys for us that we've talked about and that really brought us success the first time around was first thing we have to do with PVs, you've got to take care of the basketball. Um, you know, they, they press, they play that extended zone where if you make mistakes, uh, a lot of times they turn into layups. So taking care of the basketball not only gives us uh, possession and opportunities to score, but it also limits them shooting layups. So we've got to eliminate opportunities simply by taking care of the ball. Um, two, I think um, we've got to keep them off the foul line. Uh, prior to our first game, they were averaging 25 foul attempts 
uh, you know, foul shot attempts uh, per game, and that's easy opportunities for them to score. So we've got to make them finish, keep them off the foul line, and then certainly offense, uh, offensive rebounding is a second key to their offense. They live for their second and third opportunities. So uh, if we can keep them off the boards and limit their opportunities, uh, that will be critical for us. But um, as for us, I just need to see us play confidently and assertively. Uh, I told our kids we can live with we can live with mistakes, but they have to be aggressive ones. So if we're assertive tonight um, and can uh, take care of those three keys, um, I think we'll have another good shot again. Thank you very much for your time, Coach, and good luck tonight. We want to hopefully bring home a victory. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Sure. Big thank you again to Activities Director at Muscatine High School, Tom Olsis, for that interview with Coach Susan Orvis as they uh, as we're here tonight as the Pleasant Valley Spartans visit Muscatine. Joel Krausar and my part partner Devin Diedrichs here. So we, we heard Coach Susan Orvis talk in that interview about Pleasant Valley, uh, what they like to do. And, and right. pretty, if they're pretty familiar with it, they're going to run that zone. Right. They're going to press. And when you look at the numbers, I mean, they get, they've got they've made 107 free throws on the season, right. and they've shot 186. Is where the Muskies have a much higher free throw percentage as a team, but they've shot 49 and made 35. Right. Where you know, as Pleasant Valley has been to the line five times what Muscatine has this season. So those are some numbers that kind of indicate to you right. know, the style of play, and Muscatine was able to go up and win that game. You know, Devin, you've, you've been around teams like this. I've been around right. teams a lot like Pleasant Valley. Uh, my alma mater runs a very similar uh, style. Uh, it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to manage if you don't handle the ball, and thankfully the Muskies have veterans in the right. guard position. Right, and it's going to be really important for those veterans to step up tonight for Muscatine. I mean, it's going to be attacking physical defense from PV, so you're going to have to be ready from the opening tip. Uh, you know what's coming. Uh, Coach Orvis alluded to it. They know what's coming, so they have to be ready to go here tonight. And, they, and Coach Orvis also happy to have a full roster yeah. back. That game against Ben North, they had seven available players uh, right. coming off of the holiday break. And tonight, not the case. We expect to see a, a strong rotation, and we expect to see more minutes tonight maybe from Alicia Garcia, who saw her first in-game action uh, just early after that holiday break who missed all of last season as a junior. Again, if you're new to the Muskie program, Alicia Garcia, future University of Northern Iowa Panther, she missed her entire junior campaign with a serious knee injury. Uh, she's healthy. She's getting back into game shape. And uh, we look forward to seeing more of her tonight uh, as the Muskies host the Spartans. And that will take us to our starting lineups for the evening. For the Pleasant Valley Spartans, starting number five, Jesse Meyer, the guard. And then number 12, Jesse Clemens, also starting for the Spartans. Along with number 20, Addie Kirkhoff. And then number 33, uh, Hallie Weiss. And then number 40, Riley Weiss, will be starting again. Those uh, five players have started all nine games for the Spartans this year and they are led by their leading scorer, Devin, and that uh, their leading scorer this year is Hallie Weiss, the sophomore. She's averaging just under, or just over 12 and a half points per game. So not a high volume scorer, right. but the young sophomore really heavily involved in what Pleasant Valley wants to do offensively. Yeah, and PV's really balanced. I mean, you look at that, I mean, she only averages 12 points a game, but the rest of their team too, they're really balanced. So Muscatine's gonna have to defend all five positions tonight. And starting for the Muskies, the senior Zoe Long at guard, number 15, Grace Bodie at the other guard, number 22, Emma Zillig finally back in the lineup after missing that game against Bettendorf. And then Riley Moss, the other senior, will be starting number 31. And then also starting number 40, Maddie Peterson, uh, the senior center for the Muskies. Again, both teams, lots of experience on their roster, lots of experience uh, playing, starting, right. playing in multiple positions. And uh, the Muskies want to try to repeat that success story that they had earlier this season. And they're really pretty convincing 42 to 27 victory right. over Pleasant Valley on the road. And you know, having been in that gym, yeah. that's not <laughs> an easy place to go up and win. It's like 
Oh, very the toughest weird. place to White, play in the MAC. Yeah. Sterile lighting. It feels yeah. like you're playing basketball in, in a, a hospital. In a hospital. Yeah. And <laughs> it is. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of positive memories of going there. No. Nope. But we will be here for tip off as we stand for our national anthem. A little bit more applause uh, tonight as due to the uh, relaxation of some of the requirements and restrictions here at in the state of Iowa now each uh, student athlete is given four tickets to reserve so there we've doubled our attendance Devin we now have four tickets for each player yeah in the gym and I'm not saying that tongue-in-cheek it's, it's happy to see Right. A few more bodies in the stands as these uh, these the season continues on. Right. It's really good to see more and more people, and hopefully, it's if the vaccine keeps getting distributed and stuff, maybe towards the end we can get more and more people in here. It'd be really good. It's always good to have a fuller crowd and more energy to feed off of. Peterson unable to secure the tip, and it will be Spartan ball. Meyer brings it up. Spartans work it around the corner. Really good defense here from Muscatine early. Jesse Clemens trying to go baseline. Weiss with a shot, no good. Rebound by Clemens. And that is Addie Kirkhoff with the rebound and the bucket, and that gets them right into their press. 2-2-1 right. press. And Bodie, the ball is tipped out of bounds, so it will be the Muskie ball. Uh, that's a, they really attack, don't they? I mean, they're, it's not a three-quarter court, two-two-one. It's a full. Yeah. Now, they, court now do they go to the one-two-one? And then there's Maddie Peterson coming back for the ball, and now Bodie will bring it across the timeline. And here's that zone. So we'll see how Muscatine attacks. You normally want to get a girl in the middle, and then you can find your shooters off of it. And they're extending that, and that's yeah. going to be deflected and stolen. Clemens with the layup. It's good, and Coach Orphans oh. wants a 30-second timeout. Oh. Not happy with early execution of that uh, of that defense. Yeah, and there's turnover, a couple turn, almost a turnover down here, and a turnover to start. You can't give PV live ball turnovers like that, otherwise they're going to convert on us. Uh, so Muscatine's just got to slow down a little bit and run their offense. And you saw the little bit of the adjustment that Pleasant Valley right. made in that zone, and they brought their baseline defender up to the free throw line, so it was almost like a 2-1-2 two -two zone. Right. Trying to take away the... Take away the high post. Yeah. Here's Bodie in the corner. Gets it back to Long. Now Long goes over now the top attack. to Riley Moss. So much better press break there. Right. Now Muscatine has to execute in the half court. Zoe Long for three. Ooh. No good. Rebound Peterson. And that is up and good. Oh, that's huge for Muscatine, right? I mean, he... Get no. a really good look from Zoe Long. Now the Muskies go full court. 
Here comes Haley Vice. Oh. Haley Vice. She hasn't stolen my Moss. Oh, that was just pure speed there from Moss. That's really good defense. Zillig back to Long. Long Gotta gets be it to oh. Peterson in the high post. Long thinks about the step back. As Zoe Long gets it over. That's good. Get the ball to the high post and defensive flaps around it. Moss back to Long. The Muscatine being patient. And that's what you have to be against PV. You don't need to force shots here. Make them work the on right. defense. Now Zoe Long back at the logo. Into Peterson. Zillig in the corner for three. It's good. That three-point basket. Sponsored by First National Bank of Muscatine, one of our fine supporters. And they will sponsor our three-pointers all season long as the Spartans turn it over. And that was a really good possession on that last offensive possession. They didn't force anything. They got the ball into the high post. And then they found the open shooter in the corner. That's how you beat the zone. It'll give you the corners. Oh. Peterson, ooh, and that's a big oh. collision there. It's going to be a foul on Clemens. Peterson, oh, Peterson did a nice job coming yeah. back to that ball and uh, attacking it. Right. And that's how they're being the press so far. They're starting her back and bringing it up. We'll see what PB does to adjust to that. And now Grace Bodie at the top of the key. They get it into Garcia. Bodie for three. No good. Rebound Spartans. But you see, when they get the ball into that high post, PV's defense is collapsing down on everything. Kirkhoff crosses over Bodie. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Kirkhoff. Now she gets it to Vice. Muscatine's got to eliminate the second chance opportunities here. Three offensive rebounds for Pleasant yeah. Valley, and Vice with the putback. Muscatine did a really good job of def defending, and then he couldn't secure it. That's really good press break. Now Bodie will be on the wing. Gets it back to Long. Long gets the entry pass in the, to Garcia. They're doing a really good job on the press break, though. They're not panicking like PV wants them to. They're doing a really good job. Pleasant Valley with another deflection. That ball will go out of bounds. It'll be musky ball. in the ball game for the Muskies. Bodie Garcia, Peterson, Moss, and Long. PV's got plenty of depth too, because they run that attacking style defense. They rotate a lot of bodies in there. And that steal by Megan Schiltz, who just checked into the ball game. Schiltz, Meyer, Weiss, Wood, and Carius now into the game. Carius gets it to Wood, or excuse me, to Meyer. Meyer's going to get an and one. Right now, PV's beating Muscatine to spots right now. Um, so P Muscatine's got to adjust and get to the spots and force them to have shots that they don't want. Right now, PV's getting a lot of easy buckets for them. Jesse Meyer will go to the free throw line. Free throw no good, but another offensive rebound. That one by Carius. Now we're gonna have a three second call. Good defense off the rebound. As Carius was so far into the basket, she couldn't put it back up. Yeah, but Muscatine right now is getting outworked on the offensive glass. So they've got to do a good job of boxing out here and finding bodies to hit. Avery Eagle checks into the ball game for the Muskies. Now Zoe Long will get it over the timeline. Muscatine with five early points, and they've been scoreless the last four minutes. Skip pass. Bodie then attacks, and she draws the foul. Really oh. smart play. Yeah, and it's really good. You attack, right? So when you when they're in a zone like that and they skip over to the corner, you attack in the corner. It's not a shooting foul. They called it on the floor. But when you attack a zone like that and force 
them to collapse, and then that's when they'll foul. And Bodie in the corner gets it back to Long. They're doing a really good job. They're closing out on Zoe yeah. every time she has a chance, which makes sense. The school's leader in three points made. Yeah. Lots of teams got to go towards the basket here. Avery Eagle shot fake in the corner. Now they're going to call her for a double dribble. It's a good defensive possession there for the Spartans. Yeah, but most of the team's doing a really good job of beating the pressure so far. They're just having a few unforced turnovers, and that's what's given PV the lead so far. Now Muscatine in a full court. Matching pressure with pressure here. Clemens over to Kirkhoff. And now that and that is looks like Clemens stepped out of bounds. So a turnover for the Spartans. This game's pace is going pretty frantic, isn't it? <laughs> and if you're the Muskies, the the bad thing about a turnover like that or a a made basket and it gives it gives PV a time chance to set that press up. Right. It's really nice when you can have Alicia Garcia in the middle though yeah, as know, your decision maker. A tall person who can handle the ball. Right. But is also a fantastic passer. Right. That's a really benefit for Muscatine here is they PV's pressure. Garcia works it over. Now we have shot up in the corner. And that three is good. That's Maddie Peterson, and she ties it up. Well, that was really good, though, again. And they got it to the high post, and they found the shooter opposite. Muscatine's doing a really good job so far getting that ball to that high post. Schiltz gets it to Vice. Vice back to Schiltz, and then that shot is rebounded by Peterson. And this is where Muscatine can attack, so PV can't set up that zone if they can get out and run. Garcia working hard, posting yeah. up. Now Bodie drives and she kicks. Peterson for three again from the corner. No good. Offensive rebound, Garcia. And they are going to call down oh, a foul. Oh. And the coach for PV isn't really happy about that one. But that's a really good job of collapsing and going hard for that offensive rebound. That's what Muscatine can do. They've got three girls that could go do that for them, and that's really good. Pleasant Valley coached by Jennifer Getz, Amy Labarge, Sammy Urban, Marcy Hill, and Sophie Harris. Garcia makes the first free throw. Muscatine's done a really good job weathering that storm. I mean, PV was really amping the pressure early, and Muscatine called a quick timeout by Coach Orvis, and after that, they've really settled down. Second free throw is good, and yeah, you, you said they weathered the storm, but unlike the the rapid Ooh. front wall of a, of a Midwest thunderstorm, <laughs> Pleasant Valley's approach is more like a, a hurricane yeah. where you have to put up with it for for several hours, yeah. and you, you can't just weather the first surge. You have, to, right. you have to get through the whole thing. But you got through the first wave, right? Yes. Bounce pass defended by Garcia. Bodie able to steal oh. it. Oh, but she turns it over. Muscatine's, Muscatine's defense able to recover, though. Muscatine's doing a really better job here on the defensive end the last few minutes of defending. Meyer drives left. Peterson cuts her off. It's really nice when you have that much length for Muscatine to be able to switch. There's Vice to the other Vice. And that three ball is good by Kirkhoff. Bodie breaks the pressure. That was a really good job of pulling it out and done, didn't try to force anything. Good ball movement by the Muskies here. The Spartans just do such a good job of being active in the passing lane. Yeah, they're really committing to trapping in that corner. They're rotating everyone. So if we got a skip pass here, maybe we can give it to them. Garcia pass. down low. Oh, Unable to finish. That's a good luck, Re though, for Muscatine. Rebound Meyer. We're under the 22nd mark here in the first quarter. 
See if PV holds for one here. Lice with the runner. Gets the bucket. Left team's got to go here. Six seconds to go. Now Zoe right. Long. Kick it to the head to Bodie. Bodie is going to go to the free throw. And no. they're going to call it on the floor. Point nine here. So you got to get a quick shot. Or a tip play. But another team foul on the Spartans. It's another way you attack a team right. that's this aggressive is you get right. them into foul trouble. And that's the second foul on Clemens. Right, and once you beat that pressure, you should attack so they don't have the time to set up that attacking zone they're in. Oh, good luck for the Muskies. Peterson unable to make it. That's one quarter of play here at Muscatine. We'll be back after a short break on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility, because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. And welcome back to Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Joel Krausar, Devin Diedrichs on the call. The Muskies trail Pleasant Valley by three after the first quarter. 13-10 is the score. And you, you mentioned it, Devin. You know, Muscatine's done a decent job of handling this pressure. Right, and that's going to be important all game because you know it's coming, and especially if you get a lead late. You know that they're going to keep the pressure up for all 32 minutes. So Muscatine's going to have to keep a good job, keep strong with the ball. Zoe Long drives it, kicks it back out to the wing. Shot fake. They're really making sure Zoe Long doesn't beat him. Peterson getting the ball in the high post, being forced out. Yeah. That pressure, you could set up a back cut almost off of it. They're out so high. Peterson good take. up and under move. <laughs> Unable to finish. Rebound Spartans and Jesse Meyer. Muscle Team's getting some really good looks, though, at the basket. Emily Wood in the ball game here for the Spartans. Meyer drives baseline. Oh. Unable to finish. Good rebound. Is Russman. Nice strong rebound. That's what you got to do because PV is always going to attack. So you got to make sure you come down with that rebound strong and hold on to it. Now the Muskie offense sets up. Where Muscatine's had success on the offensive end is a high post touch and the, then the defense collapses around it and they've found shooters in the corner. So I'm going to be interested to see if they do that again. Long gets it back from the post. Over to Moss, now long on the baseline. They're doing a really good job on Zoe Long here early. They're going to force anyone else to beat him. And long drives. They're going to call a jump ball. And it will be Spartan ball. But they're doing a really good job being aggressive against that pressure. They're not being timid and intimidated by it. They're doing a really go good job on it. So we'll see. So they'll get some shots off of it. Alicia Garcia checks into the ball game for the Muskies. Ali Weiss, unable to get on good the board defense. yet. It's really good defense by Alicia Garcia. They are really extending that pressure, Joel. I mean, it's. I think at some point you could set up that. Good look there from Riley Moss. And that'll send Alicia Garcia to the free throw line. You mentioned the back cut. That was a baseline yep. cut there by Grace Bodie. Moss found her and it 
cause that defense to kind of panic and shift. Right, and that's what you got to do. You got to find the holes in the zone, right? Because they can't cover every area of the floor. So if you find the holes in the zone, and then it'll force them to collapse and you'll get good looks like what you got with Alicia Garcia. Garcia with the first free throw. CBI Bank and Trust is bringing you some musty athletics this year. It's really nice to see her out on the yep. floor and starting to get healthier. You can see her confidence is starting to get up too. And that's an X factor for Muscatine going forward. She draws a foul as Emily Wood turns the corner. She's fouled attempting a scoop shot. First foul on Garcia. And we mentioned the proclivity of the Spartans being able to get to the free throw line. Right. As Wood makes the first. Here, last time PV had free throw attempts, they got an offensive rebound. So we'll see if Muscatine can do a better job boxing out here. Wood doesn't even make him have to do yeah. it. Makes the second. No pressure here, except for on Zoe Long, boxing one. Literally, almost. that feels like a trap. Like they're, we're going to see a trap. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Twenty-two is open behind if they find them. They're real PV right now. Timeout. Coach Orvis seeing the adjustment that they made on defense. And wants to make sure that her team knows how to handle that. So right now they put. A girl just on Zoe, uh, full court all the way down. So we'll see if they can get a screen on her, get Zoe Long going here. Make sure you download the Discover Muscatine Apple or Android app to get free access to more exclusive Muscatine content than anywhere else, like Muskie Sports Broadcasts, Muscatine Today with Ashley Loveless, local news and Muscatine Living content from contributors like Tony Tone, the Muscatine Ministerial Association, Jacob Bauer and more. Have you downloaded the app yet, Devin? I actually have. I, mean, yes. I, I look at it every day. It's yeah. kind of how I get my local news. There you go. We'll see here what yep. TV's going in. Bodie gets it into Garcia. Garcia skips it to Long. Zilly shot fake in the corner. They're really attacking. Zillig with a baseline cut, uh -oh. gets it back to Long. Long with a pull-up shot, no Ooh. good. Rebound, Garcia. She's doing a really good job on the offensive glass so far for Muscatine, giving several offensive possessions here. That's what you got to do against those zones. Lost back to Bodie. So against an attacking zone like that. Strong take by Garcia and good. So against a zone like that, they want you to go to the corner so you can trap. So if you can stay out of that corner, good things will happen. Schlitz brings it up. Gives it to Meyer. Meyer over to Vice. Good help. That's now Riley Vice, the senior. Hallie Vice, the sophomore. Ooh. Shot up by Schlitz, no good. Excuse me, that's Wood. PV's getting some really good looks too, and so is Muscatine. It's been a really good game actually for both teams offensively. It's been close, each team making yeah. adjustments within the game. Two really good coaches, two really top tier who, coaches in the match. Who really I think have fun trying to figure right. each other out. Garcia then with the foul. And the chance for the three-point play. That was pretty. That was a really good move. But it was all set up by that Muscatine offense and that ball movement again. You know this being the son of a coach. Yeah. And having dipped your toe into the coaching <laughs> profession yourself. And that's how I kind of cut my teeth a little bit is you, you really enjoy playing the good ones. Yeah. Because you get to kind of test your metal a yep. little bit and, and think, okay, if I was going to do this, what it was, that whole prep, that's, right. a, that's a really enjoyable part. And it's yeah. even better when you see them do what they're, you think that they're going to do and yeah. you have an answer for it. Yeah. It's Garcia really makes that free throw. And Maddie Peterson will check into the game. 
some fantastic minutes yeah. so far from Alicia Garcia. And as you can see, she's getting more and more back into game shape. I mean, we've seen it. And she's done a really good job, and she's getting her feet under her, so to speak. That's a steal by Peterson on the inbound. Long finds the corner, shot fake, runner. Good. There's the baseline runner. And that was a good. They were closing so hard on the three-point line. She just sidestepped them and got into the lane. That's really good. Team full court press oh. here. Vice, Riley Vice able to finish at the rim. That's four points for her. It's so fun to watch these two coaches coach, though. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's awesome. They're both the intensity, and I mean, if I could be half the coaches that these two are, I would be very happy with my career. Absolutely. Peterson in the high post. Zoe Long, she's going to get called for the travel. <laughs> Jesse Clemens kind of pulled the chair out from under her there. Yeah. I think Zoe <laughs> thought she was going to get some more contact. And Maybe she did get more yeah, contact. Yeah. Uh, well. Doubled the crowd or doubling the, <laughs> the frustration with the officials. All right. As Clemens brings it up for the Spartans. Both these teams on the defensive end. There's a end. turnover. Both these teams on the defensive end, though, are really, really fundamentally sound. That will go as a as a turnover against Pleasant Valley and Addie Kirkhoff, but huge assist there to Grace Bodie and her footwork to cut that corner off. It's amazing. We talk about officiating crews. So I played AAU basketball. These guys were doing beyond the baseline games in third and fourth grade. So they've been doing it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe Long, you act like you're this ancient person that's 21. Yeah, <laughs> that is ancient. What are you talking about? Zoe Long passes, kicked out of bounds, <laughs> so it'll be the musky ball with 2.27 to go here in the first half. Musket team protecting the lead. Good pass. Oh. Find Maddie on the baseline. It's going to be deflected by Wood, and that's it'll be musky right. ball. But that's the right idea. If they're going to leave that baseline open like that, you at least got to make them think about you're going to do it. Bodie back to Long in the corner. Gets it over to Bodie. Moss in the wing. See, there they are in that corner again. That's where PV wants them in that attacking zone. High post back to Long. Good Bodie gets a good movement. pass to Garcia. Good, good ball, ball movement. Oh, well, Peterson able, able to finish, but got her own rebound. Really good offensive possession, though, for Muscatine with that ball movement. That was a clinic of how to run that. Yeah. Peterson, again, unable to. She'll go to the free throw line. Muscatine now in the one and one bonus. Under Just under two minutes to play. See, that's the disadvantage of playing such an attacking defense is if you get in foul trouble early, teams will get opportunities to get points without time going off the clock. Peterson makes the first free throw. High V of Muscatine, proud supporters of Muskie Athletics, along with Toyota of Muscatine and Lutheran Livering Senior Campus. It's also interesting to see now that Muscatine has more players and more depth that they're going more with a full court pressure yep. and stuff. Hallie Weiss with the step back three, no good. Rebound, Peterson. Uh, that's a really good, strong rebound. She's on a few of those tonight. Grace Bodie now works it around. I still think Muscatine it should touch the high post every single time and against the go zone. right there to Garcia. She's going to get called for the travel. Good that's defense. Yeah, it was, but that's really good, again, offensive possession for Muscatine because with that zone, if you can get into the high post, it'll force the break down somewhere else. Avery Eagle checks back into the ball game for the Muskies. On the floor for the Muskies, Long, Bodie, Eagle, uh, Moss, and Garcia. And there's a trap here for the Muskies. They're gonna call foul. Mm. Really good. I like how Coach Orvis is mixing up the defense, not letting PV settle into one thing. This will be a foul on Riley Moss, her second. Extends out on Wood. 
Ooh, turnover, Pleasant Valley. Hallie Weiss in the post wasn't looking for the ball. And that miscommunication yeah. turns into fortune for the Muskies. <laughs> oh. oh. And now Weiss will bring it up, gets it to Wood. Kirkhoff. Kirkhoff shot no good, rebound Garcia. And now Moss will get it back to Long and she'll set up this musky offense. 35 seconds to go. Try hold for one. Oh. It's hard to hold for one against yeah. this kind of a defense though. So it's gonna be another turnover for the Muskies as the Spartans will take over. And we have a score update from PV. It's 24-17 PV. Over the Musky Boys. Yep. Musky Boys playing some really good basketball. basketball right now. Megan Shields checks into the ball game. I'm gonna call Riley Moss for a, a foul oh. going through the screen. I don't know, that's her third though. You probably wanna get her out. Yeah. That one, yeah. that one was questionable. 22.9 seconds to go here in the first half. That's a tough one though. You're trying to play hard and go through that screen. I don't. I wasn't sure the screen was set. Yeah, I wasn't either, but you know, that's some of those you gotta live with. Vice with the turnaround. Here you go. This is the big, if they can get a bucket here before half, all the momentum. Ball deflected out of bounds by Schultz. And PV really attacked. Holy moly. Garcia goes baseline. Ooh. It's going to go out of bounds, but with 0.2 seconds yeah. left, I'm not sure that's enough time to even. Oh, well, you run a tip play. True. You have a time for one tip play. You got to throw this up. And Garcia oh. gave it the best chance that they could as the Muskies will have a four-point lead now going into halftime. We'll be back after a two-minute break with your halftime show. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice. Always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home. And there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. The Communities College.
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. And we are back on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Joel Krausar and my partner Devin Diedrichs on the call. Devin, halftime, you know, Muscatine has to be really happy with how yeah. they played that first half. Obviously a four-point lead, uh, but more importantly, they they really weathered every variation of yeah. that pressure and zone that Pleasant Valley threw at them. Well, and that's what experienced ball handlers does for you, though. I mean, Coach Orvis can rely on those veteran ball handlers and who have obviously played a lot of varsity minutes and have seen probably about every defense in the book. So... Muscatine in the second half, though, is going to have to continue to be strong with the ball because, you know, the pressure is just going to keep ramping up for PV. Yeah, and it's it's this, it's a story as old as time. It's <laughs> This is how Pleasant Valley plays. Yeah. This is this is what Coach Getz does, and it's I enjoy it. I actually, I really like how they play. Yeah. Uh, it's it's sometimes frustrating as, yeah. uh, as the opponent because it is relentless, and it's been really impressive how Muscatine has handled that. A relentless approach. One of the big keys that they've done is they've worked on getting the ball into the high post. Right. And Alicia Garcia yeah. coming off the bench still, uh, mi limiting her minutes. She still has nine points in right. her in her action and just one foul. And that's been a huge key to the Muskie success is having Garcia in the middle of that offensive attack. Right. And anytime you can have a 6-1 post player that is also very skilled at putting the ball on the floor and can make plays, but also be a really good decision maker. She's made a couple really good passes out of that. And that's what Muscatine, if I'm Muscatine, I continue to do is get the ball that high post and fi dictate, because then it dictates the whole defense. Yeah, the one alarming thing, I think, if, you, if there's any uh, yeah. cause for concern for the Muskies is Riley Moss, the senior guard, and arguably the best defender in yeah. the conference, but for sure the best defender uh, for the Muskies has three fouls. She got too late there in the second quarter. Yeah. Uh, so she's got foul trouble coming into this half. Uh, we s that'll be a kind of a subplot of how this second half rolls along with the bench. Been strong for the Muskies. Right. Avery Eagle playing some significant minutes there in the first half. Um, and then the, and for the Muskies, Maddie Peterson, a real bright spot as well, uh, helping break that pressure. Uh, you've also got Emma Zillig made a three-point bu yep. bucket early in the game. Zoe Long, just two points, but her contribution has been uh, invaluable, yeah. really, in organizing the press break and organizing the offense for the Muskies. We're going to take another quick break, get some fine words from our fine sponsors on the Discover Muscatine Network, and we will be back with more halftime show for the Muskies. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice. Always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home. And there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. The Communities College. 
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost. Welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network and Halftime presented by Ruvo Plumbing and Heating. Joel Krausar, Devin Diedrichs on the call. We're just a couple minutes away here from the beginning of the second half. Muskies are back out warming up. You know, the one thing is Muscatine has a four-point lead, and they ha really haven't shot the ball very right. well. They've been able to get it inside. They've Most of their points have come in the paint, but they've done an outstanding job of converting on their free throws, missing just one free throw in that first half. Kind of beating Pleasant Valley at their own game of getting to the free throw line, shooting at a high percentage, and, uh, and forcing forcing the uh, the benches to have to play. I, I think that's a big thing to watch here going into the second half is foul, the team foul position right. uh, for Pleasant Valley. While they don't have any one single player who is uh, in foul trouble, they have had to play multiple different lineups because right. of trying to avoid the foul trouble. Yeah, and it'll be interesting too. I mean, you always talk about in sports, right, the first four minutes after halftime, the last four before half and the first four out of half to set the tempo and the pace. We'll see how Muscatine can come out of the locker room here and see if they can come and play with that same energy they play with the last four minutes in the second half or second quarter. Yeah, and, and getting getting the looks right for Zoe Long, you, you, yeah. you really want to make sure that she has her chance to get her offense going. And uh, much credit to the Spartans for taking her away. But also a good job by Muscatine, right, of taking what they're giving them. I mean, off the opposite of that, I mean, yeah, they took Zoe Long away, but Alicia Garcia stepped up and others. So we'll see what adjustments they make out of half, too. And so the Muskies lead 21-17 here as we begin the second half. Don't forget to stay tuned for our post-game show where we'll have our offensive player of the game presented by Bear of Muscatine the Eastern Iowa Community College Defensive Player of the Game, and our Rivo Plumbing and Heating Play of the Game. Coach Orvis really looking to, to see if this second half produces one of those outstanding plays as right. the Muskies look to build on this four-point lead. Again, these two teams met just a few weeks ago. The Spartans, who were 7-2 and two on the year, one of their only two losses was to Muscatine uh, just a few weeks ago as the Muskies 1-5 and five on the season. But this is, I think, their first game where they really can say they're at full strength yeah. roster-wise. Right. The second half underway as the Muskies start with the ball. Grace Bodie into some extended trouble there. So it's almost like they're in a 2-1-2, and the baseline is wide open in the corner. Clemens, Weiss, Weiss, Kirkoff, and Meyer on the floor for the Spartans as Clemens gets the steal. Gets it inside to Riley Vice. Two up and good for the senior. Yeah, and that's that live ball turnover we were talking about, though. Got numbers off of that. Now Long gets it over the right. timeline to Moss. Peterson in the corner. She did have a big three from there earlier in the game. Right. Long from way downtown oh. and good. That was a... Uh, that was almost an NBA range that free point right there. That was Bonnie drive territory. <laughs> Maybe that'll get her going. Hallie Weiss looking for the answer. Zoe Long just going full on <laughs> NBA jam and just kind of the circle <laughs> on the floor and shooting. Riley Moss now on the wing. She probably has the green light from about anywhere. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a shooter <laughs> like that. La Luz Es Verde. Oh, wow. And that is the 
limit of my Spanish. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me for any Spanish. That was not my bet. Oh. It's just been a long time since I've took, taken the class. That is defended by Halley, or excuse me, Riley Vice, and it will be musky ball under their own basket. We'll see if that three can get Zoe Long going. Peterson, shot and she is fouled. Don't forget we'll be back in the gym on Friday as the Musky boys will be back home in the friendly confines. And then next week, a quadrangular wrestling event on, on Tuesday the 19th as Mediapolis, New London, and Davenport West venture to Muscatine for some more wrestling action on your Discover Muscatine Sports Network. This is where Muscatine, though, has got to convert these points. I mean, they're three points. Peterson makes the second. And you know, the Muskies set up their press. You know, it's really interesting now that Muscatine's back at full strength that they are showing a little full court pressure. Inside to Riley Vice. And I think that's the adjustment that the Spartans yeah. are going to. Is how do we get it inside to Vice? We might see Alicia Garcia work. here. She is checking into the ball game. That's 8.6 points coming in the first two minutes of the second half for Riley Vice. Her sister Hallie, the leading scorer for the Spartans, just two points on the night so far. Yeah, I guess I'm, I shouldn't assume they're sisters, but they have the same last name. They got to be related in grade. some capacity. Yeah, I, I will assume that they are related. But I, if you're watching along and you feel like commenting in the uh, comments, we really do appreciate that. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, go click that bell and subscribe to the Discover Muscatine page and get notified whenever live action is happening here on Discover Muscatine. So no full court pressure here so far from uh, from PV. That's interesting. They go right into that 2-3 or modified 2-3 zone. It kind of inverts a little bit. To a 3-2, 2-3, 2-1-2. I mean, it's... Remember enough. Missouri doing that in the 90s. They had two seven-foot identical twins, huh. and they would kind of float back and forth between that. Oh, that would be nice to have. Oh. Maddie back, Peterson huh? on the baseline. Oh, little scoop reverse layup. She oh. draws the foul. But that's really good offense from Muscatine, right? I mean, they're so aggressive that the back cuts will be open for Muscatine. Now Maddie Peterson goes to the free throw line. This is the first. That's the second foul on Kirkhoff. going to be a big storyline here for if Muscatine can make their free throws close out this game. This is the second that's rebounded by Moore. Oh, we're going to have a foul against you know, the Muskies. You know, I always struggle with those types of calls because there's an official that's right there and he's trailing that play. I don't know if that's his call to make, to be honest. Wood tries to feed the post, and that's going to be a foul on Zoe Long. She got a good call. Yeah, she and that was a good call. So on the floor for the Muskies, Long, Bodie, Peterson, Garcia, and Moss. Loose ball, Riley. Oh, boy, that's really a really good hustle. That's Grace Bodie coming up with a loose ball. That is really Fantastic good hustle. job. See, Maddie Peterson right there. Oh, stuck in. And that's that block that you want. And Muscatine here, too, can use ball fakes, right? And be aggressive. Oh, you got to look inside to Maddie Peterson. Just throw it to her. Right there. Beautiful. Peterson. Beautiful. Able to finish. That's been there all game, so we'll see if PV will adjust to that. I mean, it's really good offense by Muscatine. Vice to Meyer. Meyer drives oh, baseline. Off arm push, but okay. That shot up, no good. And they're gonna call an over the back foul on the Spartans. That one's going to go against Wood. And here comes that press. So Muscatine's got to be ready here. <laughs> oh, or. 
It's Mucky Bob. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think there was some confusion. Oh, as Garcia will now inbound to Bodie. Oh. Bodie gets it to Long. And now Zoe turns the corner. She tries to push it up. This is trouble. Yeah, you got to get it across. And they are able oh. to get it across the timeline. Oh. Garcia bails out Moss. Ooh. Now Bodie for three. And she's fouled. And that'll be three free throws for the junior. Oh, those are the tough ones for PV, though. You play really good defense. You close out. And then you foul the three-point shooter. That's one thing you never want to do in any level of basketball. Outstanding ball movement yeah. by the Muskies to get that open look. As Bodie goes to the free throw line. And first free throw in and out. Bodie's a 66% free throw shooter on the season. I really like how Muscat teams counteracting PV's pressure though in the second half. They're doing a really good job of, the second. of really not panicking um, and doing a really good job of finding the open people off the press because PV is trailing a lot of plays and they're finding the open girl off of that. Riots and Rebels Salon bringing you musky athletics. As two out of three ain't bad for Grace <laughs> Bodie here. <laughs> uh, you don't want to reach there though. Schiltz oh. turns it over, trying right to get to it to Meyer down low and Zoe Long with the interception. And it's going the other way. Oh, okay. Most teams doing a really good job ball movement wise. Now, uh, this is where against the zone, you can't dribble your way out of it. Bodie oh, gets good pass great again. pass. And Peterson able to finish. That's really, really, really good offense. I mean, Coach Orvis made a really good adjustment at half. Finding that short yeah. corner. Yeah. 10 point lead here. Oh. They get it down to Vice, which has been the big part. We've got a full time out here from the Spartans. We're going to step away. We'll be back with more musky basketball on the Discover Musket Team Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. We are back at Muscatine High School. Joel Krausar, Devin Diedrich from the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Whether you're watching on your app, your smartphone, or on your smart TV, any sort of smart device, it's the smart decision to watch musky basketball well played. here on Discover Muscatine. As the Muskies with a nine-point lead here. Eight. Eight-point lead. <laughs> Thanks for the You're welcome. correction as they're able to get over the timeline. Really done a nice job yeah. this whole second half handling this full court press right. as the Muskies. Oh. And, oh. and that pass just got away. That's as the right idea. The baseline has been the bread and butter for the Muskies here this second half. All right, that's the really right idea. Just a little miscommunication there. Little token pressure. <laughs> Spartans unable to secure the ball, and here's Grace Bodie. Layup up no good, rebound by Clemens. Clemens now oh, gets it to Schiltz, and they are slowing it down <laughs> wisely. Oh, that's really good luck though for Muscatine. As the scramble bucket able to go for the Spartans. That was a really good job by Riley Moss there of not fouling and picking up that fourth foul cheaply. Good pass. 
That shot blocked. It'll be musky ball. But that's a really good take. If I'm Muscatine, I'm perfectly okay with attacking that pressure like that. Muskie boys trail 36-19 yeah. after three. Shoot. Spartans ending the third quarter on a 12-0 run on up there. And there's a shot. It's really tough Foul. to win that PV, and especially when the style of pace that PV plays. If you get down early, it's really tough to win on the road. As Peterson will go to the free throw line, Coach Getz not happy with that call. Yeah, it looks like she got a lot of ball, to be honest with you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie Peterson makes the first free throw. So this will be key for Muscatine as we go down the stretch here. They've got to make their free throws. Oh, oh good hustle. Uh-oh. Riley Moss gets the ball for the Muskies. Making it back to that high post. Peterson, strong take. Oh, trying to draw the foul. Good defense from the Spartans. Well, that's not a bad take either for Muscatine. I mean, here comes Kirkhoff. Moving screen. Clemens with the three, no good. Gets her own rebound and able to get the bucket. Uh, Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Pleasant Valley's cut that lead to five. And there's Moss. Good catch. And Meyer with the foul. And that's six team fouls now. Oh, man. That free throw shooting is going to be a really key here for the final about 10 minutes left in this game. So the Muskies, the next foul will go to the line shooting a one and one. That's five fouls on Meyer. As Zoe Long brings it up for the Muskies. She gets it to Bodie. They need a bucket here. High post to Garcia, she wow. gets it back to Long. One more. Ah, that turnover is Zillig unable to secure the pass. It's the right idea though, Muscatine's doing a really good job doing the right idea, they just gotta convert on some of these. Oh, intercepted by Zillig. That's a way to get your turnover back, right there. Yep. The turnover back, and we're even. Yeah. Now Riley Moss. I'd hold it until they come out. Gets it back to Bodie. And Bodie is fouled. And that blocking foul will send Zoe Long to the free throw line. That's the third foul on Clemens now. Muscatine's doing a really good job with ball security here. Of you, they see the press coming. So uh, Long misses the free throw. And that will bring Vice up the floor. Kirkhoff. Oh, wow. Will pull up. No good. Rebound by Bodie. Bodie slows wisely it slows yeah. it down when she didn't have the numbers. Oh, that's really good. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Zillig in the corner, back to Long. Good. Long gets it to Garcia. Bodie oh, finds pass. Zillig. The Muskies being very patient, and there's yeah. a strong finish from Alicia Garcia. Well, that's really good, really good there. Of just making sure that they got a good look, and it was really good ball movement all the way around. That's a big bucket there. Now the Spartans uh -oh. look to counter, to get it inside. Wood oh. shot, no good. Rebound, Carius up and good with 20 seconds to go in the fourth uh, quarter. Those third quarter. Or third quarter. I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, time flies when you're having fun. Um, if I'm Muscatine here, we're holding for one shot. Garcia back to Bodie. Five seconds. It will be musky ball. And just like the other two quarters, they'll <laughs> have a chance to end the quarter with an inbounds play underneath their own basket. Yeah. A little bit more time on the clock yeah, for this one. More in point two. Good point nine, point two. That was three point four. So Bodie unable to get the runner off. Oh. So the Muskies lead by five at the end of three. We'll be back with more Muskie girls basketball on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 
know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problem... Welcome back for the fourth quarter on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Joel Krausar, Devin Diedrichs in a little bit more lively Muscatine yeah. gymnasium now that each athlete gets four tickets. It's really good to see. Spartans good open up the, ha the quarter, turning it over. Zoe Long with the steal. Good backside help. Well, that was just a really smart, heady play. They knew they were going to try to get into the post. Bodie over to Moss, now Moss back to Bodie. So much pressure here. Five point ball game, few turnovers that can swing quickly. Yeah. And that's what Pleasant Valley is working towards. Oh, good pass. Garcia good pass. finds the short corner, Maddie Peterson layup is good. The two man game between yeah. Garcia and Peterson has been outstanding for the Muskies. Tonight. And every time Muscatines needed a bucket, it seems that's what they've gone to and it's worked out really well. And a turnover. You know, we've praised the Muskie offense yeah. greatly tonight, but their defense has been just as impressive. Yeah, and every person that's touched the floor for Muscatine has played really well defensively. Zoe Long gets the ball. Now she gets it back, but that's deflected and out of bounds, so it'll be Muskie ball. But decisive right. has been the Muskie backcourt of breaking this press. Yeah, that ball got tipped, but that was a quick decision to put right. pressure on the Spartans. Right. That ball loose, deflected, and now the Muskies will retain possession. Got to be strong with the ball. That's a foul. And that foul goes on Wood, Emily Wood. Wood, Wood did. Wonder she, what she, she was, did. Well. She, she was moving, but she got the worst yeah. of that contact, trying to take the charge. She got a Grace Bodie shoulder right to the nose. And um, if this was a college game, we would be reviewing it for the next 10 minutes. Uh, there's, there's no common foul needed on that one. Yeah. So you're saying you're not a fan of the review oh process? Oh, my goodness. It slows the game down way too much. <laughs> uh, trying to watch a game, and all of a sudden, five minutes later, it's longer than NFL reviews at that point. The best is when they have to get the, uh, the third official. Oh, to yeah, over it's like a couple wide. As Bodie makes the first free throw, and she makes the second. The Muskies extend the lead to nine. A little token pressure here, I think. The speed will TV off a little bit. Inside. Vice gets it inside to Wood with a nice take. And now and another timeout here from Pleasant Valley. That's a 30-second timeout. So if you're Muscatino, you know that she's left-handed. So you want to sit on that left hand and force her to go the other way. She could make that shot with the right hand, but it would be a lot tougher right. than just going right to the left. And credit, though, to the entry pass. Right. That it got her moving in the direction she wanted to go and was able to turn the corner. And as much as I love the Iowa Hawkeyes, Connor McCaffrey does a really good job with that. And, you know. A lot of young players can watch Connor McCaffrey play the game and how to feed the post like that. Well, and we're seeing it too. I, I watched the Iowa women's game the other night. Caitlin Clark, a prolific yeah. scorer, but she's got some dynamic skills as a passer as well. 
to throw as a, the first triple-double right. by a Hawkeye freshman in 30 years that she had. Dowling Catholic, right? Yeah, number two high school player in the nation. Stayed in in state, stayed home. I believe she leads the Big Ten in scoring. And then also uh, Ashley Jones for Iowa State, who's yeah. like second in the nation Jeez. in scoring. Another local product. So women's basketball, very strong in this state. Uh, and two of the better high school coaches going at it yeah. tonight, two of the better high school programs of the last 15 years yeah. going at it. You know, Muscatine winning a state title in 2003. Throw it to the high post. Good. Let her work. Oh. Great finish by Garcia. And you can see why she's going to UNI with that finish. That was really well done. She's really a gifted scorer. Oh, wow. There's Hallie Weiss. Three ball, no good. Rebounded long. I don't know if that's the shot you want at PV. That's kind of rushed and not in that flow of that offense at all. <laughs> Garcia now in the high post. Smart decision. Oh, go. And she gets the and one opportunity. Oh. You know, we saw it on Friday night with Josh Diekman having a coming out party. Yeah. Alicia Garcia tonight is also having one. And that's really good to see. Yeah, looking like the Garcia that we saw her freshman and sophomore yeah. season. 15 points. She's got 15. Maddie Peterson has 15. Just phenomenal front court play from these Muskies tonight. Yeah. But it's been everyone who's contributed. Garcia makes the free throw. That extends it to a 12-point lead with five and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Seems like every time PV's almost gone on a run, Muscatine has always done a good job having the counter punch so far. Uh, and just like that, there's a foul on Garcia. It's three on her, and that's going to be an and one chance for Wood. Yeah, that's a tough matchup, though. And she's a guard, and that's a big on a guard. And that's a tough one to be caught in the position in. But Emily Wood, a 45% free throw shooter. <laughs> so she'll make it. Oh. Hey, the Garcia jinx works with the, the other rebound. way, too. I got to get it across here, though. Uh-oh. Now, timeout from the Muskies. 30-second timeout. Good timeout. Oh. Are they actually, are they going full? I got to wait and see here. Full timeout. Full timeout. So we'll step away. We'll be back shortly with more Musky basketball on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. And welcome back to Muscatine High School as the Muskies lead Pleasant Valley by 10 here with 5 and 11, 5 11 to go in the fourth quarter. So, so go ahead. Uh, I just had a question for you. Did it, does the 10 second count restart after the timeout or does it keep going? I don't know the answer. Okay. I'll have to, I, I just we'll didn't have to look that up for the, the next dead ball or maybe I'll yeah. have to get back to you at the next game. But. I just didn't know how that, how that works. I have a hard enough time keeping up <laughs> with uh, – all the youth sports rules that oh. change when my kids play. Yeah. And uh, I usually, before the year, do get into the rule book. Right. Uh, that's not a rule I've researched. I'm just going to be honest. Oh. It's As Maddie Peterson gets it out of the short corner there. Unfortunately, the Muskies were able to just make right. quick work and right. get it across. Right, right. Final score, 52-27. The Muskie boys fall to Pleasant Valley. It's a tough one. They're playing really well, too. But well, I don't think that that's an indicator. No. There's many a team that has 
gone in and been sucked into the quicksand of Pleasant <laughs> Valley High School. I remember my senior year when we got sucked into the quicksand <laughs> up there. Riley Moss makes the first of two free throws. It's good to see her have some success at the free throw line. 4.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Emma Zillig checks back in for the Muskies. And that second free throw is good. Yeah. Jesse Meyer in for the Spartans. She's had foul trouble. She has three fouls. Here's Kirkhoff. Kirkhoff. Oh. Now that three ball, good from Jesse Clemens, the freshman. She's going to be trouble for the conference oh, for the yeah. next three years. And that's going to be a foul on Wood. Yeah, against that press, though, you probably don't want to get that ball in that corner. If you can, it's your friend, if you can get the ball to the middle of the court versus the pressure. And that foul puts Muscatine into the double, double bonus. So the Muskies shooting two free throws now at every foul. Moss makes the third free throw. Misses that one. Oh. Rebound by Kirkhoff. And the Spartans trying to go here with under four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. You mentioned first four of the half, last four yeah. of the half. Who can close this one out? Three ball up, no good. Rebounded by Wood, excuse me, Meyer, who gets it to Wood. And the Muskies active on oh. defense with their hands. Kirkhoff, shot fake. She drives on Moss, oh, wow. fade away, no good. Rebound, Garcia. That was really good defense. I mean, she was in her hip pocket the whole time. It's one of those shots that they make it, you tip your hat. Yeah. Because it was so well defended. Long to Moss, back to Long. You're in no hurry here if you're Muscatine. Still got to be strong with the ball, but you don't need an errant turnover. Now Moss, they're right at that half yeah. court line. You probably want to. Oh, that's good. Now get to the high post. Bode. Now Bodie. No hurry here. Can't get it to that corner, though. Uh. She's able to step through the trap and another timeout, full timeout. We'll be back with more musky basketball on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. You know Ribbo as expert plumbers, but did you know Ribbo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Ribbo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Ribbo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car control, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. And we are back here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 2.47 to go here in the fourth quarter as the Muskies looking to close this one, close out. This one out. They've got this 10 point lead. They're in the double bonus. They just have three team fouls. So they've got fouls to give, too. So right. Hopefully we don't have to come works to try to inbound it here. Oh. Peterson comes free. Ooh. Riley Moss. See, this is where the experience of Muscatine's guards, though, comes into play. Clemens grabbed the hip of Bodie. Now Bodie will go to the free throw line. Muscatine's experienced guards here have done this situation a few times, so they know exactly what they need to do, and that's a really good luxury to have. Bodie makes the first free throw. 66% free throw shooter is Grace Bodie. And she makes them both. Four for five on the night from the free throw line. Uh, 
Wood really being aggressive. Yeah. And she's been the offense for the Spartans the last three minutes. And that's Ten points for her. And again, though, she's left-handed. So Moss oh. just using Jeez. that speed, turning the corner. Oh. Able to keep the dribble. Oh. A little Pistol Pete Maravich <laughs> action there. One athletic play. Five counts on here. As long gets to, Mil to Bodie. Up 10 with two minutes left. Long crosses over. <laughs> it's nice to have the students back. Oh, in yeah. And there's a foul <laughs> on Hallie Vice. The simple, the simple crossover draws a big. <laughs> ooh, let's, look the the, let's look at the and one video. Do you even know what those are? No. Man, now it's like showing my age. Back in your era. Back in my yeah. day, <laughs> in 1999. As Zoe Long uh -huh. misses the first free throw. Long a 75% free throw shooter on the season. Pretty uncharacteristic of her. There you go. Makes a second. Moves the lead to 11. That's six points for the leading score for the Muskies. Yeah, but she's done a lot of other things for Muscatine. I mean, I like, like that story. Like that defensive effort. Yeah. Moss and Long kind of gumming up the works and Moss getting the steal there. <laughs> oh, I missed the student section. <laughs> Riley Moss turning the corner. <laughs> Under a minute and a half to play. <laughs> Long and and Bodie. I think Bodie you almost try to foul here if you're PV, don't you? Try to extend this game. Or man, under just almost a minute to go here. A little bit over a minute. Moss at timeout. <laughs> going to be a five second call but coach Orvis uses her last timeout we're under a minute to play with an 11 point lead it's a full timeout we're going to keep it right here so we kind of saw what Pleasant Valley I, I with you was surprised they yeah. didn't try to foul Let's get a quick foul and try to extend the game as long as possible but now inbound side in sideline inbounds if you're Pleasant Valley you're looking at trying to get a steal here All right and if, you're and if team, not you've you got to foul pretty quick with this 11 point lead right now, nope. that's where the chess game comes yeah, into play right. here. Because if you look at the stat sheet, Riley Moss is the is the at a 66% is one of the lower free throw or free throw percentage shooters for the Muskies. But she's made four big she's ones. She's made early. four big ones tonight. The other, if you look at the stat sheet, right. Alicia Garcia had 62%. But <laughs> I think if you <laughs> coach gets, she, you're saying. I don't know if I want to put a D1 shooter on the line because Alicia, uh, that is well below her career average. But Muscatine is a 71% yeah. free throw shooting team as a whole. So it's pick your poison, really. Right. And that, that, that's why it's so key to have these veterans I who have played in so many Maddie. different situations. Maddie Peterson. Long. Oh, that's deflected out of bounds by Clemens. Six seconds did go off the clock. Give it to her again. Oh. They get it to Bodie. Or excuse me. Zillig. That's Zillig. Oh. And <laughs> Bodie is then fouled by Wood. That's four now on Wood. So Clemens and Wood each have four fouls. Meyer and Kirkhoff, excuse me, Meyer and Halley Vice each have three. And then Kirkhoff has two fouls. We haven't seen much of Riley Vice the last four minutes. I think that's because the, the Spartans want to have some three-point shooters on the floor. Right. As they try to overcome this 12-point lead as Grace Bodie makes the first free throw. Yeah, she was their offense to start the second half, though, so I'd be I'd kind of interested to see if they do bring her back in. Oh, got a match up here. They get it ahead to Schultz. Schultz to Clemens. Clemens for three. No oh. good. Oh. Rebound Halley Vice. And that is a turnover against Pleasant Valley. Good defense from Maddie Peterson. So 31 seconds to go in the game. The Muskies lead 51 38. And at this point, you just got to get it across. And now oh. Riley Moss will turn the corner. Track speed. Get it to Long. 
Spartans still extending that defense. And we're under 15 seconds to play here. What an impressive Muskies. win for Muscatine. Yeah, yeah, really. At every moment had an answer. Yeah. Four seconds to go. As the Muskies defeat the Spartans 51 to 38. It's just a fantastic uh, display from the Muskies. And we will have more in our post game show. We'll be back uh, after a brief break. We'll be back with post game comments on the Discover Muskatine Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility, because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Welcome back to Muscatine High School and the Discover Muscatine Sports Network as the Muscatine Muskies defeat Pleasant Valley 52 to 38. Uh, Muscatine now two and five on the year. Both wins coming against the now seven and three <laughs> Pleasant Valley Spartans. And they both have been convincing victories. 42-27 right. the first go round, 52-38 tonight. And every time we saw Pleasant yeah. Valley make a push, the Muskies had an answer, and then right. they slowly grew that lead on top of their counter. And right. it, it's one thing to be in a boxing match <laughs> and to counter punch, but to counter punch and then control the fight right. is really an impressive thing. And I, I really have to attribute a lot of that to the senior leadership and yeah. experience of this Muskie team. Well, right. I mean, when you have Alicia Garcia coming back and playing really well and starting to play at the level that we saw our first couple years, and we have – you know, the experience of Zoe Long and Riley Moss and Grace Bodie. I mean, all those different ball handlers, they did a really good job of not speeding the game up for themselves. They did a really good job instead of slowing down and playing at their pace, and they got a lot of easy buckets off of it. And our Eastern Iowa Community College defensive player of the game, Devin, who would you have for our defensive player of the game? Um you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give it to the whole Muscatine team defense. I think that's fair. I don't. Not one player really yeah. stood out. They they well, executed a great defensive game. Right. Plan. As a collective group, though, they did a really good job of communicating, and a lot of times they allowed one possession, and it was really good all the way through. Of not, you know, when they needed stop, they got them. So I'm going to give it to the whole Muscatine team defense. And then our Rivo Plumbing and Heating play of the game. Uh, I mean. There was a sequence where Alicia Garcia caught the ball at the high post uh, two times in a row and found Maddie Peterson in that short corner for easy layups. And I thought that really dictated the game of, you know, where it was going to go in the first half even. And I thought it was a really good job of, you know, making sure that they took care of the ball. But, you know, and the, those turned into momentum-changing plays. And I think that that call for our Rivo plumbing and heating pl uh, play of the game was some foreshadowing yeah. <laughs> as to who our bear of Muscatine offensive player of the game was. Well, I, I mean, it's got to be both Maddie Peterson and Alicia Garcia. Both of them played an outstanding game tonight. Um, Alicia had 
16, and Maddie had 15, and the two bigs for Muscatine really played well tonight. And I think we're going to take another quick break here because I believe we are going to have, actually, Alicia Garcia is going to join us in our postgame show. We'll be able to have a quick interview to talk with the Muskie senior. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back uh, in three minutes with what we hope is uh, our op one of our co-offensive players of the game, Alicia Garcia. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility, because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problem... Welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network as the Muscatine Muskies defeat Pleasant Valley 52-38. to 38. I, I teased that we were going to have <laughs> uh, Alicia Garcia, but with COVID protocols and just uh, logistics of getting her up to where we are, because we're socially distanced from the rest of the crowd, uh, we, it didn't work out. We're hoping to be able to have that opportunity in future games where we'll be oh, able to do a post. Actually, coming. you know what? She's They've coming. been able to figure out a way around the protocol, and uh, we are going to have Alicia Garcia uh, momentarily. She's heading on up as Devin uh, steps aside for a minute. And uh, I will do a quick post-game interview here with Alicia Garcia. And we are joined now by our co-offensive player of the game along with Maddie Peterson. Alicia Garcia, 16 points tonight. Uh, I had you for six assists as well. But let's just get to the, to the elephant that was in the room. How good does it feel to get to kind of play some meaningful minutes again your senior year of high school? Oh, it feels it feels so great just being out there with my whole team and everyone back from, you know, because we had to quarantine a while back. So having everyone back and just having fun, it felt so it felt, felt so great. And playing a team that you're always familiar with and such a, a conference rival in Pleasant Valley, uh, really from up here, it looks like you guys executed your game plan to a T. Uh, that, that offensive adjustment of putting you in the high post and then finding Maddie in the short corner, was that something you guys kind of worked through in practice or was that kind of a halftime adjustment? Um, 
well before they were lower and then they started coming up and I started seeing it more so um, just Maddie being able to be down there and call for the ball and us being able to communicate helped us a lot got her a lot of points got me some assists and we just were able to adjust and <laughs> we just had fun out there you know two big wins against Pleasant Valley and now kind of uh, you mentioned uh, a full complement your whole team's kind of back together what does a big win like this do for momentum going forward for your team? Oh, I, I don't know if you could have heard us in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just the best feeling ever. We were in there. Everyone's cheering. I mean, we had a couple rough spots out there, but we never, you know, we never, uh, we never backed away from them. You know, we came back at them stronger. W whether we made a mistake or not, we didn't give up, and that's what we need to keep doing, and I know we will keep doing. So I have a, a really good feeling about our next games, and, um, I think we can keep the streak going. And having having the confidence in each other, because so many of you have been playing so much basketball together mm -hmm. at the high school level, from your freshman year now, uh, all the way to your senior, you and Zoe, you know, playing significant minutes as freshmen now, the senior leaders on this team. Uh, you know, Coach Orvis talks about the senior leadership. Now, I actually get to talk to you, a senior. Uh, how much do you value that leadership role uh, for this team? Oh, it's 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 so much to me being able to come back from sitting a whole season. You know, a lot of people would see that as a big uh, big burden, a big obstacle in the way, but I saw it as, you know, I get to be back out there with my team, and, and they were with me every step of the way. They never they never uh, let me get in my head, so it, it, it means everything to be back out there with them. And you mentioned you missed, obviously, the whole year last year mm -hmm. and uh, limited action at the beginning of the season, starting to see you play more. How is your knee feeling? Is everything starting to kind of come back? Yeah, yeah, it's coming back into it. The first couple games, there's a little, you know, kinks in it, but um, that's just uh, that's athletic stuff I have to work through, and it's nothing pain-wise. It's just uh, getting back into shape and getting my knee used to how I was before. Well, we're happy to see it. We're looking forward to the rest of the season. Alicia Garcia, senior for the Muskies, leading scorer tonight with 16 points. Just on the heels was Maddie Peterson with 15, and it's it's a blessing to have more than one six-footer who can score, <laughs> and the Muskies have three of them. So it's fun to watch. <laughs> And uh, they're going to try to build that momentum coming off this big win, 52-38 to 38 over Pleasant Valley. Alicia, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Alicia Garcia signing off now. And now we're going to sign off. I don't think I can button it up any better than she just did. Huge win for the Muskies, and we're looking forward to more. We'll be back Friday night as the Muskies, uh, the boys, will be back in the gym on Friday for my partner, Devin Diedrichs, on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Good night, everybody.